hi guys. Thank you for that uh, um, clap and whooping and cheering. It's a good thing you gave it to me before the presentation because definitely not going to get one after. <laughs> Uh, okay, so as you can see, that's me. So from shifts to success, this is my journey, as you like what I did there. Um, and yeah, so cohort one. So here at the beginning with all of you guys, which is great. So I'm um, going to start with who am I? Makes sense, really, for the camera and everyone else here. Uh, so I was a Sussex police officer for almost 10 years. And it was actually nine years and seven months, if we're being precise. And that's what it says on my uh, certificate of, of service. I uh, I would have loved to have made it to 10 years, but I, I, I couldn't, couldn't bear it any longer, unfortunately. So uh, yeah, called it a day. Um, so I was NRT. I know different um, forces around the country have different acronyms. So NRT is Neighbourhood Response Team. Uh, so basically the 999 team uh, in the southeast. And I did that for about eight years. Okay, so I was uh, NRT, uh, response officer, taser train, uh, amber permit and things like that. Um, after, when, it, when I got to about eight years, I put period of time off in there, and that's a, that's a nice way of putting it. Um, as you know, there's a lot of issues with officers in the police, um, a lot of stress, uh, understaffing, overwork, all that sort of stuff. Uh, and uh, after a number of years, that, that, that gets to you. So I had a little bit of a meltdown, should we say. Uh, that's, an, again, a nice way of putting it. Uh, and so I, so I had to have some time off. Um, wanted to get back to work. Uh, I didn't really understand what happened to me, actually. Uh, I don't think anyone did. Um, and no one saw it coming, all that sort of stuff. The, the, the stuff that is happening to officers on a daily basis. And, and from my point of view, I would have been one of the last people that I thought it would have happened to as well. Um, so yeah, so I, so I had that time off. Um, the support wasn't great in the beginning. Again, I don't think anyone uh, knew what was going on. Um, and then, and then, you know, a little bit late, I got 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 a little bit better with the with the support. But um, I don't know if you guys up here have have it. We we have Flint House down in the south, which is like a, a rehab centre for for police officers, and they take both physical injuries and and mental kind of injuries. And you start to worry, or you, or you start to know you're not in a in a good way when um, HR or the the nurse says you are too ill to go to Flint House. So that, that, and that, that was said to me. So it was at that point I thought, okay, so really need to kind of sort this out. Um, so yeah, so had the, had the time off. Unfortunately, again, another kind of um, indicator of, of where things are at kind of uh, across the board is that when I was eventually ready to go to Flint House, uh, I wasn't able to go because they were so inundated with officers that needed mental health kind of rehab, that they 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 they'd actually sent an email out saying we're not accepting any more officer referrals for mental health, so I, I couldn't go at all anyway. Uh, so then I came back, um, and I went to the missing persons and child sexual exploitation team. So I was there for a while, really enjoyed that actually. Um, that was good fun. That kind of got me back in. I had a great team. Uh, and it was, it, was, it was actually great for my health as well, because it was daytime shifts. It was taking me away from the things that were, were triggering me and things like that. So it was fantastic. And you know, I'd, I'd probably, maybe, have been there. No, I would have been there a, a little bit longer than, than I was. Um, but what happened is after about uh, nine months, they decided to send me back to NRT, despite everything that had happened. Uh, and again, you know, I, I was told on occasions um, by the nurse, you know, you, Rob, you're not fit to be an NRT officer anymore. You're not fit to do that role. Yet the powers that be decided that's where I was going to go. Uh, and it's at that point I, I, I decided it was, it was time to make a move. So that's my story. So why did I decide to go into business? So I, I was actually in business before I left the police. Um, at first, my business... Uh, had actually been a long-term hobby uh, and or businesses I've got, got to, it's twofold. Uh, and then I realized they were actually a passion. So I was, I was doing it kind of just gently as a, as a hobby on the side, uh, just something a little bit for me. Um, <clears throat> the job obviously wasn't what it was when I first started. Uh, and I think deep down I knew that and I could see change. Um, you know, I, I was able to spot change and 
and, and the way things could go. So uh, it was almost like a, a backup, like a secondary option. Um, and, and just to also give me a bit of less time, less time having to be at work, I could complement that with, with something else, which obviously helped my health as well. Uh, and, and towards the end, it was, it was 100%, it was a way out of the police. So what is my business? Well, my business is, as I said, my business, it's twofold. So the, the first part is, is martial arts classes. So we run martial arts classes uh, across different locations. Uh, and in the Southeast, we've actually got three different locations. So we teach kids from as young as three years old, two, three years old, and that's our tiny tigers. We then move up to the little ninjas. We've then got our junior warriors and then our adults classes. So we take from, as I said, two to three, and our oldest student is currently 70 years old. So we cater across the range. Um, but the things I've learned is we don't, we don't advertise to everyone. Um, we're, we are very strategic and tactical, and these are the types of things you know, that I've learned from, from being around Alex and chatting with Alex and Shifts to Success, is that what we, what we actually do is we find, we've found through testing that our advertising is, is best used towards tiny tigers and little ninjas. Because the, the two, three, four-year-old range there's a lot less choice, there's a lot less out there, so there's a lot less competition in terms of getting people's attention. Okay, uh, Same with the little ninjas, five, six years old, things like that. So what we do is we market on Facebook to those people. So we generate interest through photos, videos, and, and, and posts, and our, our kind of, our, our capture is a, is a free session. So we offer that. They'll go into our, our, our funnel online, and what will happen is they'll claim the free session. Uh, an automatic Facebook bot will request their telephone number. So this is all automated. So if someone claims at three in the morning, by the time I wake up, I've got, I've got their telephone number. Um, and then the PA will call, book them into a class. They'll have their free class and then we'll look to, to close them as a, as a client. Um, ju just on that, actually, today, we've, we just so happen to have some ads running because it's the new year. So the ads that we've done, um, we've got five live ads at the moment, um, and they went up, I think it was the day before yesterday. Uh, and even today, while we're here, I get notif notifications come through on my phone. This person has commented, because it tells me when they've commented. So they've made a comment. I know instantly the auto bot has requested their number. And inevitably, within about 30 or 40 seconds, this person has sent you a message, and it, it's their telephone number. And then I know that the PA is going to be calling them to book them in as well. So it's, it, it's really handy that I'm generating leads, I'm generating business, and I, I'm here with you guys. Yeah. Um, so what we then do, where, where we like to think we're quite clever, is that we, we advertise, as I said, to the tiny tigers and the little ninjas. Our conversion rate and, and, and little things that I've learned from Alex, um, like with that, when someone comments, we used to, when someone would comment, we would then send them a personal message on Facebook saying, please, you know, congratulations on claiming, please give us your number, we'll, we'll book you in. And what was happening is the person that would do that is, let's say, let's say, you know, Mark, you claimed a, a session at nine in the morning, right, for your little boy, and then my PA messages you for your number at 8 p.m. at night, because she's been at work all day. You, a lot of the time you've gone cold. So when we, when we advertise that way, we might get 40 to 50% of people then give us their number if they didn't hear from us. Now with the Autobot, someone says they want a free session, instantly they get a message from our page that requests their number. We're now getting between 80 and 100% of people reply with their telephone numbers every time we do an ad. So there's a really, really big difference in, in just one of those tiny things. And, and, and like I've, when I've had conversations with some of you guys, it, sometimes it is about the small things that can make your life and business a lot easier. And that's just, that's one thing. And that, that online system just cost me eight pound a month. That's, that's it. And I use it for one thing, to capture a, a, a number. You can use it for, for so much more. Um, cool, so that's that. So leading on from that, so, so as I said, the martial arts classes was, was my hobby. It was kind of um, a passion of mine. And I've also been able to use the, the income from that to, to reinvest in, in property um, and, and build that as a business because, again, that started as a hobby when I was about 18, 19, 20, and I realized actually that that is a real true love of mine. I absolutely love doing that. So I invest locally where I live, 
Um, and my original strategy was to traditionally just buy, buy to let flats. Uh, like I said, as a hobby, every couple of years I'd make some money from my business and then reinvest it, etc. Um, and now I'm, I'm, I've moved into a more professional realm. Um, I'm moving into houses of multiple occupation, uh, complete uh, refurbishments, um, joint ventures, which I'll go into a little bit more uh, on the slides, uh, title splits, and, and these are all different strategies that you can use within property like you can in, in, within your own business. Um, and I'm kind of looking to always creatively finance deals with using very, very little or, or none of my own money. Um, and that's, that's, what I, that's the part of that business I really love. I love the, the problem solving, the puzzle solving, um, finding a creative solution or spotting an opportunity or a way of doing something that no one else has figured out that, that makes that deal possible. So that's, uh, that's me, that's my business or businesses. So the income from my business. Um, so I'm fortunate enough to have you know, worked smart and hard, so not just hard, uh, and income from my business in the last year, which is the shifts to success, uh, has been over 100,000. So, <laughs> thanks, Alex. Uh, so, my biggest wins, so I was asked to share some of my biggest wins with you guys over the past year. Um, one of those is that we hit well over 100 students across our martial arts classes. Um, don't quote me, but I actually think we've hit over 100 students now on just one of our classes, not across, across all of them. Um, I, I know we're very, very close. If not, we've just broken that mark on, on one class. So that, that's really cool. Um, and, and what's good about that is I've still got my passion for what was my hobby. And although it's my business, it's, it's, it's not my job. Okay, I've not gone from one job to another job where I'm not going to enjoy it and it's taking up my life, etc. because... You know, I've, I've systemized things. I've, I've put that business together in such a way that I still get to enjoy it. I get to do the parts of the business that I enjoy doing. And um, I systemize and outsource the parts that I don't enjoy doing, like admin, paperwork. <laughs> um, another big win is um, I did a property deal. So I, I, I did a property purchase. So we purchased that property for, for £950,000. Um, and I didn't use any of my own money to do that. Um, I don't own the whole deal, but again, I spotted an opportunity to put a deal together with the money and I was able to gently carve out a part of that deal for myself, for, for having the knowledge and, and, and the opportunity spotting of, of, of doing that. So that was, that was really cool for me because I was like, I've just bought this for almost a million pounds and I haven't spent a penny. That's a very cool thing to be able to say out loud. Um, I raised £450,000 from just one investor uh, in what's called joint venture financing. So there's different types of financing. Um, I was able to actually get that agreement in one phone call, which was very, very cool. Uh, since then, um, from different investors, raised a further 700000 in joint venture financing. And so what that means is we don't get the money all in one go. What that means is that we, we've created a company, we've put all the contracts in place, they've, they've, they've got this, this money, it is in the bank, it's liquid cash, it's ready to go. So now I go and find the deals, I calculate those deals, et cetera, approach them and, and they fund them. Um, and then I currently have both verbal and written confirmation from a, a different investor uh, that he wants to put a million pounds in the UK market with us at some point this year. He's just waiting on, a, on the sale of a business. Um, So again, that's, that's very cool. Uh, and then the biggest win for me really, which is I think for, for a lot of police officers or for you guys or people looking to replace their income is, is, is the income. It's not all about the money, but, but you have to be able to support yourself. You have to obviously be able to create that income so you don't end up with another job. So um, the projections are, which is, you know, no, nothing's ever 100% guaranteed until I get to July 2019. But, looking at the deals in the pipeline and the deals I'm doing at the moment and the business, et cetera. Um, by July 2019, I'll be making a, a passive net profit. So that's money that comes in without me having to continue working for it um, from the business. 
every month of nearly four times what I was earning in the police. So. And then, so how has my life changed? So my life has changed massively, obviously, uh, since coming here. So I left the police for a start, which was great. Um, it got to a stage where there was no more fear of leaving. So I think that's, that's something that holds a lot of people back is, you know, they're tied into the pension or they're, you know, they're on top whack salary and it's like, well, if I leave, I'll take a massive pay cut, etc. So there's a lot of fear around leaving. And also, if you've done it for so long, a lot of the time it's all someone knows. Uh, but we actually have a lot of skills, an awful a lot of skills that are, are transferable to, to real life. Um, and, and a lot of the time we don't realise it because everyone else in the police has those skills as well. So it's, it's blasé. It's like, oh, okay, well, everyone can do this. They, they actually can't. If you go and talk to muggle people, a lot of the skills that we have, they, they, they just can't do what we do naturally. Um, okay, so no more fear of leaving, no more fear of what I would do. Okay, I had a plan, I had a mentor, I had someone that you know, had my back, which was good. So I've got both time and freedom. Um, this is going to sound, uh, hopefully this won't sound arrogant, but you get to a point with your time, you actually have too much of it, you start to get a little bit bored. It's like you can only go for coffee and walk the dog so much, right? Um, so I'm looking for, for other things to kind of keep me busy, but it, it, it's, it's really good. So I've got stress levels decreased, got a better diet, better sleep, better health. My outlook on life is very positive, as I feel like I'm being pushed and I've got purpose. Uh, and I've, when, I, when that says feel encouraged by the others, that, that relates to actually you guys in the room. I feel encouraged by you guys and, and what you're doing and hearing what you're doing and, and all the little wins that we have with each other. Uh, and I can see the results. It's tangible results that I can see uh, and I can measure them. Um, my sales skills and business growth has gone through the roof. Um, and again, that's, a lot of that's to do with Alex, the calls I have with him. He's got my back, he'll, he'll check stuff, he'll, he'll advise me, et cetera, and, uh, and teach me and coach me. Uh, and I've got enjoyment of running the businesses and obviously outsourcing is great as well. So uh, opportunities, so massive opportunities have opened up for me since leaving the job. Because it's, if you're so focused on, sometimes you've got to let go of something to be able to accept other stuff, right? So I had to be able to let go of that job. And, and all of a sudden, when you do that, other opportunities open up and other stuff starts coming into your life. Uh, and big goals. So my goals are really big. Yeah, they're not, uh, they could be bigger, but they don't seem that big as Alex. When I mention it, Alex is like, yeah, cool. Okay, so let's go do that. So if I'm like, I want to go raise a million pounds, Alex is like, yeah, cool. So let's, so let's go, let's put a plan together and do that. It, it's like it's already done, yeah? And then finally, top tips for future cohorts. So I'd say enjoy the shifts to success journey. Have fun with it. A lot of people, you know, enjoy the journey. It's not all about the destination. If you enjoy what you're doing, we've had a laugh this year. We had some really funny moments and, and you know, that's the stuff you remember. I mean, that's the stuff that I remember from being in a job. It's not the job itself. It's the funny, great moments I had with my team. Um, you will get there, so don't panic, don't worry. You know, just keep putting one foot in front of the other. Uh, and if you really want to make it work, you will. You'll do whatever it takes. Uh, otherwise, you will, you'll find an excuse. Okay, so it's down to you as to whether you really want to make it work or not. Uh, and finally, trust in the program and, and trust in Alex. And everything will work out.